The late 90s and early 2000s were a time when a lot of movies were made and had such an interesting and cultural impact on the world. One of them was the film Gladiator, a film directed by Ridley Scott with Russell Crowe and Joaquin Phoenix. A film that presented so many ideas about honor, humbleness and justice in the most beautiful and elegant way. The story of the Gladiator is it like it's an ancient story that will teach you something through the actions of the main character, Maximus. A teaching for you as a viewer about how you can handle with your inner demons and how to rise up above the things that can take you down, both physically and mentally. This beautiful and sad story is of this general who is loved by both his subordinates from the army and also viewed by the Emperor of Rome as a son. A man who is so humble that refuses the leadership of the Empire when he is offered to. A man who is a victim of framing and jealousy who is hunted by the Emperor's son Commodus due to his true knowledge about the Emperor's death. Hunted because Commodus feels so inferior compared to him who feels so insecure. In this quest of jealousy, Maximus' family is killed and he is hunted by Commodus. Somehow he is found and taken to be a gladiator. He fights in arenas and fate brings him back to Rome to face Commodus once again, to fight for what is right and for justice in his new and still honorable way. I always loved this movie one way or another. Probably I enjoyed Maximus' personality his humbleness, probably I was attracted by the historical time of the film. Whatever it was, the film has something special has a kind way to attract you into the story from the very beginning. Ridley Scott knows, somehow, how to make an interesting story from the start. I mean, I saw that with The Duelist too and his other films, but there is something related to Gladiator that is a jewel. The characters have a powerful impact in the formula, because both Maximus and Commodus are an example of the perfect antithesis. The story is based and is told from the point of view of Maximus, it's true, but this situation taken to extreme is what it's really about. On one side you have Maximus, who like I said he is an honorable man, a great general, a humble person loved not only by his subordinates but by his emperor too, a man with family, a man who wins the respect of others through his actions and his way to be. On the other side you have Commodus, a sleazy little scum who will do anything to have power, who is so insecure and sees enemies at every corner who is so jealous of Maximus for the love for his sister, a love that he didn't had. The difference between those two characters and the comparison between the two of them goes beyond the actions. I mean, leaving behind the fact that in the final part of the film, the antithesis goes so far that the symbolism of their armors is telling you about their characters, about their personalities in a reversed way. Like, Commodus is wearing white because he thinks he is the hero of the story, he believes himself as pure, as a god while Maximus wears black, being inferior, a murderer in an arena, a fallen soldier who has to be punished. But Ridley Scott gives you the hint from the beginning through the names of their characters. Like, the name Maximus represents the strength, the courage and the determination of how the character is made of, while the name Commodus gives you the hint that he will take shortcuts in his doings, that he will make it easy for him to get what he wants. There is a beautiful way to represent two opposite sides of a conflict and of the story, of how you can represent two sides of the same coin. And the story itself is made in a clear way. Ridley Scott shows you from the first minutes of the film who Maximus is, how he is as a general and then as a man. He shows you how Commodus is, how he tries to show his father he is worthy as a successor. Scott presents to you those two characters perfectly. And then, after the Emperor's death, the film begins in a perfect balance, and I say that because in a way, while Maximus' part of the story is taking a low road, a sad and a dramatic turn, Commodus' side of the story starts to be glorious. And this thing is for a pretty good part of the film. Then, after Commodus finds out who the great gladiator is, the film starts to balance the entire situation step by step. 
you see how Maximus' story starts to grow again and how Commodus' story is starting to descend. I said about the two sides of the same coin, but the entire story is made like this and it's so interesting because it makes you feel the characters. It makes you hate Commodus and love Maximus. Like that, Scott makes you to connect with the film, to love Maximus and to watch the movie until the end to see what is gonna happen, even if you realize early how the film will conclude. There are so many things regarding this film that I can talk about and I don't even know what I should start with, because the film gives you the story of redemption, if I might say it like this, combined with the idea of justice and vengeance. But it is not a redemption of the pure form of the world, it is more like a self-redemption, it's the story of a man who has to find a purpose for himself at some point in order to continue to live. And in a way, it is pretty ironic actually the way this self-redemption is presented and that is in the arena of the gladiators. When Maximus reached the gladiator school, he didn't want anything to do with fighting, he wanted to forget about his past, he wanted to be left alone. Step by step, he is thrown into the arena and his purpose now is to survive. After all, in the arena, he did what he did as a general, he defeated enemies. Of course, Maximus was on a whole other level, he killed, he fought differently than the others. But the real self-redemption is in the moment he realized he can confront Commodus face to face, so then his purpose changed. He wanted vengeance for his family and justice for his emperor in a right way. From a man who had no purpose to the man who had a mission, this change was made so smooth and with the help of Maximus's personality. It is made in a heroic way, if I can say it like that. It is made in a way you can relate with him perfectly and... and kindly. And the way Maximus is respected and loved by the people is his superpower, to say it like this, and the main fear of Commodus. If I am thinking it well, Ridley Scott is focused somehow on this element of Maximus' personality. At the beginning, you may think that uh, his soldiers are loving him because they were his subordinates and they went through a lot together as brothers in arms, but in reality, it's about his humbleness, it's about the way he is as a person. There are moments in the film where Maximus is so humble and so kind with everyone, with old flames like Lucilla, who is Commodus' sister, but also with Proximo and his gladiators. Maximus doesn't do anything special, he is, he is himself. He did his job honorably and that was it. He was true and loyal and friendly with his people. This virtue of Maximus is what drives Commodus insane, because he knows he is not loved by the people, he knows his control is fragile, and when a man like Maximus shows up, and more importantly when Maximus shows up, he knows he is in danger, he knows the people will choose Maximus as their hero and not Commodus. And quite frankly he was right, after all in the end, Maximus is honored as a hero of Rome and Commodus is betrayed even by his soldiers and left dead in the middle of the arena. Speaking of Lucilla, she is a character caught in the middle of this whole situation that was caused by Commodus. There are so many levels of creativity for her character that makes me wonder if she was somehow a powerful motive for Commodus to act his plan or not. If she wasn't, it was most certainly one of his ideals to be conquered. In a very twisted way, Lucilla is loved by Commodus not only as a sister but also as a woman. This incestuous idea of a relationship between her and Commodus is made by Ridley Scott in a smart way because you can see the desire in the actions of Commodus, but you see the resentment in Lucilla's eyes. Somehow, I initially thought that Lucilla's son Lucius might be the result of this incestuous relationship, but keeping to watch the movie, I realized it's not at all like this, probably because Ridley Scott presents to the viewer the fact that Commodus has an incredible interest in for Lucius, almost like a paternal feeling, but the element that cancels these sensations is Lucilla's reactions, she doesn't see Commodus as a man, she has eyes for her old flame Maximus, and her actions to overthrow Commodus from the throne of Rome has a main role in Commodus' distrust in everyone, it's the reason he totally transforms into a real dictator, and to go into the idea of the antithesis that I talked about earlier, Lucius' relation with Commodus is somehow cold, even if it is a relative. He talks with his uncle, he listens to his stories, but I feel it a bit cold, probably due to Commodus. Instead, with Maximus, the kid is so fascinated by him, he sees him as a hero, as a great man. His looks in the eyes tell you that Maximus probably is the father figure that Lucius doesn't have. And the funny part is that Lucius doesn't even know about Maximus, he doesn't know that Lucilla was close to Maximus sometime. And that says a lot about Maximus also, leaving behind the fact that he is loved by his soldiers, by gladiators and the rest of the people. Lucius' eyes can tell you a lot about those characters and strengthen your ideas about them during the film. The film is long. Having two and a half hours you may think that it might get boring, it might get monotone. 
but the rhythm of the film is essential in this case because being a long film he gives you a lot of information, he tells you a lot about the characters, about their motivations, and this thing is maintained by the fighting scenes, by the dynamic between the characters in the film, by the plot twists. Like I said, the film is like it's an ancient story, it is told in a modern and elegant way. This elegance is felt in the way the film is edited. It's smooth, descriptive, it is made to give you a certain emotions when it's necessary, in a crescendo way. The soundtrack is helping a lot with the epic moments of the film, it empowers them, it glorifies them. The film is well thought out regarding its editing. I don't know what more to say about it, because to me, it is perfect. It caught me in its magic into the story. So yeah, the film regarding this is well made. The way it is filmed also is gorgeous. There are moments when the locations are becoming the main attraction. The way Rome is presented is so clean, so ancient, so beautiful, so so glorious. The combat scenes are amazing, they are realized in a way to feel Maximus experience in combat, they are made to see a Roman general fighting its battles. The image of the film, it makes you feel that you are there with the characters. I can see that really Scott didn't lose his touch regarding the way to create perfect and beautiful worlds into his films and to present great and interesting characters in a unique way. Thinking overall about the film, I can see that Ridley Scott has kept his ideas of the concept of how to represent the main characters differently. Even if Gladiator was released in 2000, the film has a lot of similarities with Ridley Scott's first film, The Duelists. And, having a fresh memory about The Duelists, I can see some concepts from that film in Gladiator, the way the conflict escalates, the dynamic between Maximus and Commodus. There are some similarities and if I think well enough to the other films directed by Ridley Scott, he used in almost every film of his this concept of good versus evil in different ways. And regarding Gladiator, he is using this concept in a very little different way. Because in Gladiator, this battle between good and evil is like, in every movie, forced by the evil part, in this case Commodus. But in Gladiator you can properly sense the fact that evil is threatened by the good and he tries to destroy the good out of fear. If in the case of the duelists the bad guy wanted to beat the good guy to prove he is better than him, to prove his superiority, in Gladiator the bad guy tries desperately to destroy the good guy, to be safe in his role and to eliminate everything that he is afraid of. It is the same philosophical story but told differently with a different motive. Ridley Scott keeps the concept fresh, improving this idea of good versus evil, presenting different contexts regarding the characters or the locations. And of course, this thing is quite interesting because with each context, you get a new perspective of the idea. It is risky also because you may say that if you saw a movie you saw them all, but in the end, Ridley Scott is working on the classical type of the story where there is a battle between good and evil and the good always wins. And he gives you a new world, a new hero to experience that. He is like the old poet who talks about love with so many poems and each poem is different but there is the same theme and the same idea. And I can see how Lucilla's character is used just like in The Duelists. The woman is caught between two worlds, this time caught between two men, two ideas, but here, Lucilla knows what is wrong and what is right. She knows what she has to do, she knows who must protect and from whom must protect it. After all, you can say that she is the second protagonist, because if Maximus is fighting in the arena and he shows his character and ideals, Lucilla fights in the background, tries to help Maximus and do what is right, not only for her, but for Rome too, just like Maximus. After seeing the movie and analyzing it, I am thinking more and more about how the film impressed me. I didn't get bored, I did not overreact when there were scenes that may look a little bit weird or unlogical. It was a good movie to watch. After all, I think that I'm not the only one who enjoyed Gladiator. I mean, the theme song of the film became a well-known tune for those who wanted to listen to a good film soundtrack. After all, it was Hans Zimmer who worked on the theme. The iconic line, are you not entertained, has become a reference and a hint when you talk about Gladiator. The film became a cult classic in an instant. It is a film that in my opinion has to be seen. With a good story and an interesting location and atmosphere, Ridley Scott presents something new, something unique. He gave you a hero that you can probably compare him with Spartacus in how he is trusted by the people and his fighting spirit for justice. And even if Maximus is a fictional character, you can relate to him from the first moments of the film. He is not a character that has to evolve in order to grow. He is already mature, he just has to handle his problems in a correct way and has to control himself to not lose himself in what happened to him. In what way do you want to understand this film? Gladiator is like that friend that you need who is gonna tell you through his story what really matters and how humbleness and correctitude is gonna help you in achieving your purpose, even when you lost all hope and you think that life's not worth fighting anymore. To me, that's what Gladiator was when I rewatched it recently, and it's gonna be close to my heart now that I understand its hero and its story. 
Gladiator is and it will be a legend told in the cinema of the early 2000s. And as you can learn something from the legends and enjoy their heroism, Gladiator is the film that you have to watch it and discover its legend. The legend of a general who became a gladiator. The legend of Maximus.